enable. Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. Hello and welcome to Fortinet Presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV18. I'm your host Gautam Srinivasan and our theme of discussion today is Begin Your Digital Transformation with Security, Converge and Consolidate. Sharing their insights on the topic of converging network and security effectively to unlock benefits are Hitesh Mulani, Vice President and Group CISO Mahindra and Mahindra and Vishak Raman, Vice President of Sales for India, SARC and Southeast Asia at Fortinet. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on board and looking forward to a very wide-ranging conversation. But as they say, every journey has a start. So let's look at the fact that cloud transformation journeys have evolved so quickly and so exponentially. Now, of course, they've become a mainstay, but let's not forget that there is also increasing complexity at play and as a result of which, as a result of these cloud transformation, attack surfaces have also exploded in a sense exponentially. Now, if companies in this context, if companies need to start thinking about networking and security as one rather than as separate strategies, the question begs, where do they start? So maybe Vishak, we'll get your opening statement on this. Yeah, absolutely. When we really look at the network transformation, uh, it's, they're going into a hybrid era mm. where networking is no more in silos, but it's getting converged with networking and security. And this convergence trend is so important and it's been driven by applications because applications are no more coming into your traditional data centers, but they're moving into your hybrid networks. They're moving into your hybrid clouds. And guess what? Your network has also expanded laterally with 5G coming on to it, IT and OT coming mergers. So the edge is also expanded. So what you need is right now a clear approach towards networking and security with design. And it's a great opportunity to redesign your networks with security as foundational with networking features. All right, Hitesh, let me get you to comment on that, considering the need for networking and security to be seen as one. The question begs, as I mentioned, where do they start? So from an enterprise perspective, what would you have to say? I think uh, as a CISO, uh, if we go down to our basics, uh, traditionally also 70% uh, of what you wanted to secure could be done with the IT networking devices, could be done at the OS layer and all of that. Uh, what we've done over time is the firewalling and all of those technologies that have come on top of it have just layered it and made it a little more robust. But you could always, there was always this capability of achieving a lot by having IT hygiene itself. Mm. And so the convergence was always there. It's just that its form factor has now changed. You've moved from you know, a traditional on-prem form factor to a more uh, you know, unseen form factor, which is actually managed by providers in the cloud space. So you don't see all of those components around you. You don't need to necessarily configure every piece of equipment around you. It is becoming a seamless journey to go to the cloud from an on-prem enterprise with very few uh, layers, so to speak. Yeah. It's becoming more merged into one tech. And finding the right partner for that journey to the cloud is the key. All right, as they say, when you walk together, you go far. Now. Uh, I want to expand on some of the points that you have mentioned, especially the fact that you know the, the silos which get created, and this is a problem especially which, which large enterprises face. How can infra and security, in your opinion, uh, be brought together under one single vision and under one single goal? I think they've always had to be looked at collectively. Uh, they haven't been isolated in a sense. Uh, there are a lot of, you know, it's not that, uh, the CISO has a separate component, separate set of components or the security head has a separate set of components mm. versus the infra head, mm. right? It's security rules that have to be applied on that infra, mm. right? So it's always been convergent. It's just that there's somebody who sets the rules and somebody who follows it, mm. but that's no longer the case. It's all converging even in terms of management of those components, even in terms of, uh, you know, configuration of those components. Mm. It's all beginning to merge. Uh, the reason a CISO or a security head will sit outside 
uh, in this entire structure at all times will always be because you need a third eye mm. to kind of police the entire thing. All right. Uh, Vishak, I want to get your thoughts on you know, what does the effective merger of IT and OT bring to the table and how can that interconnectedness be effectively secured in your opinion? Yeah, I think um, today the business is demanding what's the daily production data. Mm. Business is demanding what's your predictive downtime. So there, you need to have your IT and OT uh, merged together. Earlier, they were completely separate, right? Now the business is demanding to have a common dashboard about the productivity of those assets. But come what? Once they integrate, the attack surface actually expands. Mm. So you need to have a capability to make sure that you segment them properly, uh, you gain better visibility and control, and make sure that what you have set as an IT guidelines is applicable for your OT environment. Because the perils on the OT side is far more, uh, you know, far more impactful if you don't get your security posture on the OT side of it. Mm -hmm. So it starts with segmenting the, your IT and OT. It starts with making sure that your legacy IT OT setups mm -hmm. have that same level of security compliance and you get the same level of visibility and control in your IT setup. Mm -hmm. And this is where the journey starts. All right, uh, Pitesh, maybe we can get your response to it. And I want you to answer it from the perspective of what happens become when OT becomes the weak link in the chain because now, now there is a lot of pressure on the OT side, especially from a cyber security perspective. And as Vishak mentioned, the need for se proper segmentation is important. So maybe any use cases on the impact that you could share? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, a lot of times uh, the, the security heads of companies are people who've traditionally come Cybersecurity heads in the country, most of them have usually come from the IT side. Mm. You know, they've, they've got their IT journeys right. Uh, OT requires a completely different approach. Uh, if you look at confidentiality, integrity, availability being the main pillars of uh, IT security, in OT security, you've got to flip the entire grid. Mm. It's availability first, then integrity of the signaling that is happening at the industrial level, and then comes confidentiality of data, mm. right? So you're talking about connecting two environments hmm. uh, effectively without compromising the pillars at hmm. both ends, which hmm. take priority, right? So, and it's a stark difference in the way you implement at both ends. At one end, you cannot, at the production end, you cannot, uh, you've got to ensure no downtimes, right? And here you've got to ensure extreme data security. So they're two very different environments, but getting those fundamentals right and uh, the journey requires just rethinking of what components already exist. A lot of the networking components, a lot of the that already exist in the environment can be fine-tuned to get your to get almost 70 to 80 percent of the controls you need in these environments uh, by effective firewalling or air gapping the two environments with proper technologies in the center. But today there are capabilities of actually getting visibility into components that are lying in the OT environment that wasn't there in the past, mm. right? These technologies are three, four, five years old. Applying that for national infrastructure, uh, national critical infrastructure projects and organizations is extremely important because uh, a lot of companies miss out on the fact that production downtimes, and I talk about, you know, companies like this, you're talking about manufacturing, pharma, um, you know, oil and gas, all of them. They need to start looking at OT very seriously mm and start securing the OT environment, getting visibility of assets, ensuring the secure connectivity. So uh, it's, it's about putting in all of those controls at your production layer. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I mean, if I was to look at m and if my production goes down, the IT, whether it works or not, doesn't matter, <laughs> right? I, I'm not getting the cars out, I'm not getting the various products out. Mm. So it's really, you know, effectively managing those two environments and, and looking at them while they're while there can be synergies of thought, mm. there's a lot that needs to be done very differently in both the environments. All right. Now, I also want to bring into the conversation tool and solution sprawl because it's always a concern when we talk about this because sometimes there is short-term thinking where you say to address a problem, maybe we go with this, but then when you sort of get a bird's eye view, you realize that, wow, I have so many security products with me. And the organization of today does have a lot of different products from different vendors in a network environment. And of course, that poses a risk. So from your perspective, Vishal, the need to effectively manage 
solution sprawl or tool sprawl from a risk management perspective? Why is it important now more than ever for CISOs to manage that sprawl? Absolutely, and I think you know you set it up pretty well. Um, we had a point problems. We bought point products. Uh, they had point consoles, which they never speak to each other. So all customers are really worried about is, how do I detect attack faster? And how do I remediate those attacks? And how do I bring in automation? When you have multiple different security consoles, which they don't talk to each other, they don't share alerts, they don't share intelligence, uh, the whole security posture gets weakened despite having these point products. So you need to have an approach, and Gartner came back in 2021, uh, which is called a cybersecurity mesh, uh, whereby all these products are interconnected and they can understand what the logs are being thrown out and how do you pick up those important alert and get those external threat feeds as well. So we at Fortinet uh, thrive on um, building the security fabric whereby we interconnect with all our security fabric products and we also tied up with third party vendors. Mm -hmm. And that, that includes our competition. So the real fight is, is not between vendor A and vendor B, but it's about the bad guys, this is the defenders like Hitesh, who wants to make sure that these ecosystems talk to each other mm -hmm. and from a detection of a threat to a remediation, there's a good amount of handshake between these point products. So this is where we're seeing this consolidation of cybersecurity mesh. Mm -hmm. And at Fortinet, we've been pioneering this for the last five years. Uh, Hitesh, uh, when we spoke in the last segment, we, we, we went through how IT and OT worlds are colliding, and they've been colliding for quite some time. That, of course, gives rise to the need for cross-skilling uh, folks. But therein comes the question of, is there a skills gap? And if so, how to address it? So what would you say to that? So I think you're talking about two uh, very different monsters and those two monsters uh, have a skill shortage anyways. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, security as a skill shortage area and then if you look at manufacturing engineering systems and, and the level of robotics that are there at the plants today and the level of skilling that is required there. Uh, and, and now you're talking about, you know, manufacturing security converging, right? Two areas of skills shortage and this middle area never existed. Now you've got to have people from both ends, right? So it's, it's really about taking people from both the uh, environments and kind of putting them into each other's shoes in a sense mm. for a short period of time and actually, uh, so a lot of cross skilling is, uh, is, is happening within the organization. Mm. It's impossible to get the resources readily available from the market. Uh, so we're, uh, we're inviting people to come on board in a journey where we're telling them that, look, you might have been IT security experts, but this is a massive area of learning. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's getting a lot of buy-in. Uh, Vishak, coming to you, because while digital transformation has been the name of the game for quite some time, there's, the novelty has sort of worn off. Let's, uh, we're also looking at organizations adopting DevOps principles, DevSecOps principles, as they try to sort of bring their product to market at a faster pace, most efficiently. But when they give, say, liberal crowd provisioning rights to developers, the questions then arise as to, you know, is legacy code going into something which is which is going to market, which is going live, which is going into production? So how do CIOs, in your opinion, avoid compromising on security while looking at business needs? Because when we just look at the app modernization journey as enterprises move to the public cloud, that's where security issues can come about. Keeping that in context, this balancing that act that CIOs and CISOs need to play, what's the trick to doing it right? Yeah, I think the game is application aware, mm -hmm. awareness, because applications are leading the game today. And um, if your security posture starts with software-defined networks, mm -hmm. right, because that's your start found starting foundation on which you're going to control what application has to go out of your network, what, what needs to be going out of your uh, uh, you know, data centers and your remote users as well. So you're gonna be an application aware network which will touch upon your cloud endpoint and your users per se, right? So first is being application aware. The second is how do you build security by design uh, in your applications itself? Mm. How you look at your DevSecOps and look at your software development cycles and making sure that you, you have your runtime code checks and the functions and the libraries what you use are hardened. Mm. 
before because there's a huge pressure on the application side to go into the market without proper software, uh, you know, security lifecycle checking. Mm. So you got to invest on tools whereby both at your network as a common denominator, which is application aware, software defined networks, and also at the application layer, looking at looking at security technologies like web application firewalls or your secure DevSecOps, making sure that security is binded within our application run because that's that's going to be the uh, interesting part to look for next three years. All right. Hitesh, your point of view on this for CIOs, how do they sort of balance the need for proper security along with business growth so that you can unlock the benefits of, of say, availability, user experience, so on and so forth? So I think it's 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 a multitude of uh, two, three different things. Uh, one is setting up reference architectures for developers to follow. Mm. Uh, the second is empowering the developers to do to hack themselves, mm. right? If I was to put it in simple terms, sort of testing terms. your limits. Yeah, so give them the tools, make them aware of what tools the security team uses, mm. right? So there's there's uh, you know dynamic code testing, there's static code testing, everything built into the DevSecOps uh, platform, mm. so they can test what they're developing over and over and over again, even before it reaches a UAT stage, mm. right? So that way they've already stress tested their uh, entire setup with uh, as far as security is concerned when it comes to the last stage of manual testing it leaves it with very little to be done or very little to be fixed at the last minute and hence uh, the journey has become far faster mm. i mean we've seen times of you know the there used to be this time when a developer would come in and it would bob between you know going for a vapt security test and then jump back to the developer's desk and that journey used to take like 20 days, 25 days. It would just keep going back and forth with test, retest, and all of that. Today, with the developer being empowered with all of these tools, he or she is also becoming appreciative of the fact that the code needs to be clean mm -hmm. and hence are becoming better at secure coding, not just coding. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, the, the turnaround time on all of this is coming to three days or four days at the last stage. You know, which is then appreciated by the entire kill chain, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody loves the whole story. Everybody is loving going down that journey. All right. Uh, I, before we conclude the conversation, I also want to focus on cybersecurity mesh architecture, which Ishak, uh, you had raised earlier, because I read a report that by 2024, organizations adopting CSMA will reduce financial impact of individual security incidents by an average of 90%. That's according to some research reports. So in your opinion, is CSMA sort of going to be the default approach for building advanced cybersecurity in this decade? Yeah. See, when we talk about the mesh architecture, it doesn't mean that you rip and replace what you have purchased already. But the question is, how are you going to stitch a common framework around that, which will give you a better manageability, which will give you a better visibility, and which will give you a better consolidation of your uh, single threat landscape. So a, a cybersecurity mesh architecture gives you an ability to detect threats faster, remediate threats faster, and bring in level of automation what you want. And this is a journey. Mm. It's not about a hardware or a software and then you, 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 are, you are mesh ready out there. But it starts with the consolidation of networking and security, which is the big phase what we're seeing. And then it goes, gets into your security operation centers and your network operation centers. And your SecOps and uh, NetOps journey will get consolidated on your LAN, WAN, Wi-Fi into one common management platform with one common secure OS and that's the journey what we see in the consolidation phase. But it will step into your SIEM, your web application firewalls, your, uh, your security orchestration capability, and how you consume your threat intelligence from outside in view of what is your attack surface about, right? So it's a journey, but what we're seeing is early signs of consolidation on the networking and uh, security coming together and delivering value proposition back to the customers. All right, and if you can expand your answer to provide our viewers with a sort of a checklist for simplifying security and reducing costs with cybersecurity uh, mesh architecture, what would you say to that? You start with network consolidation on your secure SD-WAN, then look at your SASE, secure access, software access and service edge, which is now becoming a convergence part of it. Then bring in your observability, which is your uh, advanced view of your digital enterprise. And then look at having one common dashboarding across these three layers would be a good start. 
And then look at your security operations, whereby you want to simplify the number of alerts and the alert fatigues what you're getting. And then look at minimizing your console hopping. Oh, I have got a problem in my email. Let me log into the email security console. I have a problem in my DNS security, I'll log into it. But consolidate with your security orchestration capability and dashboarding. And minimizing and reducing your security operation alert fatigues, right? So that your detection to remediation, you bring in a level of automation. And that's the journey what we are looking at. All right, that's the checklist for you to follow. And on that note, it's time to conclude this episode of Fortinet Presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV 18. Vishak, Tesh, thank you so much for joining us and of course sharing your insights on the topic. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Till next time, this is your host Gautam Srinivasan signing off. Fortinet presents Securing Your Digital Journey in association with CNBC TV 18. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.